64,000 how many? 64,098 words. That's missing, but now is that just in one translation to the NIV? Well, you might find some of these newer translations, it's 164,000. Let's just have a few easy ones, and then we'll get deeper and deeper into the doctrine. Remember a few things. Remember that Hort said, we will change it very slightly. Here a word, there a word, and nobody will even notice. And finally, when we have it all together, when we have all the little changes in one big package, if you read it all together, our doctrine, and not theirs, will be there. Isn't that what he said? That's exactly what he said. So, NIV, 2 Samuel 21, 19. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elahin, son of Yarekum, the Bethlehem, the might, killed Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. Oops, who killed him? Elan, son of Yare Origim, King James. And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines where Elanan, the son of, same one, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Who did kill Goliath? Oh, so you prefer the King James version over the other one? Over the NIV? 2 Samuel 23 verse 5, NIV. Is not my house right with God? King James Version, although my house be not so with God. So they turn everything around. When God says it's not right, the NIV says it is right. Another one. Hosea 11.12, and Judah is unruly against God, even against the faithful Holy One. King James, but Judah yet ruleth with God and is faithful with the saints. You see, God had said, Ephraim has left me, Israel has left me, but Judah is still with me. Satan doesn't like that, so he says, no, all of them were against me. So he changed that too. There's a little change. It's, you know, it's minor, but it, it's quite important. Either with God or you're against God. Matthew 5, 44, But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who per persecute you. Revised Standard Version. King James Version. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, let's just take that out, and then uh, we don't have a full story anymore. James, James Strong, professor in the 1800s. He took all the Greek words, all the Greek words in the Greek text, received text, and here's what he did. He put a number on them. And so as you go through the English text and read it, he'll put a number over that right there, and that number will take you to that Greek word. Amen. You, get the, you get the meaning. That's good. Strong's meanings are good. Now, you can go further. But that's okay for just studying your Bible, reading the book. It's, and, and, and I would, let me tell you something tonight, folks. These Bible software, I found one the other day that I've, and I've got a lot of software, but this thing right here is the best thing as far as me and I don't get anything for saying this tonight. <laughs> I'm not making money. But I found a Bible software that is free. All you have to do is download it off the internet. And it's free. And I got, I got that and I got into the resources available for it. And it blew my mind. The stuff available and it's all free. Here's what it's called. It's called eSword. E S W O R D. Type that into your into Google, find his website, and it's a Windows program. But if you want to run it on a Mac, you'll need an emulator or something like that. But E Sword is free. Mark chapter six verse eleven. If any place, if any place will not receive you and they refuse to hear you when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet for a testimony against them. What's the, what does the King James say? And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Why do you think that verse has been removed? Why do they remove the verse which says it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah? Because they do not believe in a judgment. 
You see, the choice that you make, who cares? Didn't they believe in reincarnation? Whatever you did wrong now, who cares? You can fix it next time round. And even if you can't fix it next time round, in purgatory, you can burn it off. 10 verse 24, RSV. Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. The NIV. How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Wow, even worse. King James Version. Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. What's the difference between those two? Well, here, you might as well give up from the beginning and rather reincarnate a couple of times. Here, better not get rich. Better give all your money away. Here, money is not the problem. It's making an idol of money that's a problem. Isn't that correct? Mark 13 verse 14, but when you see the desolated sacrilege set up where it ought not to be. Well, this is fascinating. But when you see the abomination, this is King James, of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not to be. Why take that out? Because Jesus is pointing to two specific apocalyptic books in the Bible where we should study for the end times. The one is the book of Daniel and the other one is the book of Revelation. Blessed are they that read the words of this book, it says, in terms of Revelation. And it says, when you see this spoken of by the prophet Daniel, go and look over there. You'll find some answers there. Because they were asked, what is the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Check it out in the book of Daniel, Jesus said. Well, let's take away the evidence. Just remove it. They don't like that prophet. Luke chapter 2 verse 14, Revised Standard Version. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace amongst men with whom he is pleased. King James, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Now what's the difference between those two? It's a very subtle change, but what is the change? Here yeah, there's an initiated few with whom he is pleased. There, God is for everyone, not two classes. This is for the initiated insider. This is for the catechumens included. Cannot be. Change it. See what I mean? It's disgusting. It's really disgusting what they're doing here. Chapter 4 verse 4. And it's not in harmony with the character of God. That's the important principle. So it's not a question of grammar, it's a question of principle. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. And Jesus answered him, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Revised Standard Version. NIV. Jesus answered, It is written, man does not live by bread alone. Is that right? King James Version. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God one gets even worse. Very slight change, but very succinct. Act 16 verse 7. After they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. The Jewai, and when they come to Mysia, da 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 da, and the Spirit of Jesus suffered them not. The RSV does the same thing, the Spirit of Jesus, and the NIV does the same thing, the Spirit of Jesus. Now, why? You see, you have to understand the occult mind to understand this one. What happens here is, the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God, tells them no. Here, it is now the Spirit of Jesus, which implies that the Spirit is in control of Jesus. Are you with me? The New Age teaches that when Jesus was one of the initiated masters that came to this earth, he didn't have power to do it right, so he was overshadowed by Maitreya, who used him like a puppet. That's what they teach. Here, the same idea comes up. Jesus is controlled by the Spirit, and the Spirit tells them what to do. Here, the implication is the Spirit says no, and if Jesus is the one who said no, then he and the Spirit are one. 
1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The Jewe, for Christ our Pash is sacrificed. The RSV, for Christ our Pash our lamb has been sacrificed. The NIV, for Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Big deal. What's gone? For us. You see, the exclusivity of Jesus has to go. State of affairs. The phrase through his blood is not found in either the Jesuit or American revised version. Its omission can be traced to Oregon, 200 AD, who expressly denies that either the body or soul of our Lord was offered as the price of our redemption. Now we must understand something here. The occultists teach that Jesus never really died for you. The occultists teach that Jesus had an esoteric body. He didn't come in the flesh. Now the Bible teaches that he who says that Jesus didn't come in the flesh is antichrist. The occultists teach that when he hung on the cross he just appeared to hang there for the Jews and that God whisked him away before he died so he never died a vicarious death for you. Do you understand the difference? So here we have the same idea. He was not sacrificed for us because esoterically he never died for you. Because you don't need a savior, you save yourself. You are God. This is arrogance of the highest degree. The power of God is denied. 1 Peter 1.22 Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. The RSV says having purified your souls by your obedience, your obedience to the truth for a sincere love of the brethren for one another, blah, blah, blah. NIV, now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. You see, here the obedience is something that you have achieved through purification of yourself. Here, the obedience that you have achieved has been made possible through the indwelling power of whom? Of God. Let's see if we can find ghost theology. Job 19 verse 26. The NASV says, Even after my flesh is flayed, yet without my flesh I shall see God. So how do you see God now? As a spook. Casper the friendly ghost. That's how you will see him. What does the King James say? And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. That's a big difference. The one is a resurrection, the other one is not. Job 26, 5. Dead things are formed under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. The revised. They, the shades margin, they are deceased, tremble beneath the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Ooh, this is fascinating. This is complicated stuff. In the first one over here, dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So, dead things are down there. The revised, now the deceased tremble underneath the waters. So there's something like hell or purgatory or something. The NIV, it gets more blatant. The dead are in deep anguish. Those beneath the waters and all that live in them. Wow! So now we have somebody burning down there in purgatory. So the NIV, again, teaches a totally unbiblical doctrine. King James, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Look what the NIV says. Unrighteously for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. What have we got here? You know, these Bibles are disgusting, as far as I'm concerned. They are disgusting. They are teaching a totally different doctrine. The different regions of conscious dead, as Roman Catholics teach, supported by the revised. King James, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book, referring to the beast, now that is, of the Lamb, slain from the foundations of the world. Here the Lamb was slain from the foundations of the world. The RSV. 
And all that dwell on earth will worship it, everyone whose names have not been written before the foundations of the world. Yet it's the people whose names have been written before the foundations in the book of life of the Lamb. The King James in 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4 says, He rose again on the third day. The Revised said, He hath been raised on the third day. What's the difference between the two? The difference is in the one, He has power within Himself to rise from the dead, and in the other one, He gets raised because He's inferior to God. That's the difference. Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, why remove all those verses? You see, here in the RSV and the NIV, you can pray to whom? You can have the Pope as Father. You can have the Pope. But here you can't, because our Father who art in heaven cannot be the Pope. So, let's take those verses out. Luke 11, 2-8. And he said unto them, when you pray, the same story, you'll see all those texts, the RSV and the NIV, they're all taken out. Uh, Post-resurrection appearance omitted, Luke 24, 40, RSV missing. King James, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. So they took out Mark, so they take it out in Luke as well. What about his miraculous ascension? And he was carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him. Gone. Gone. While they blessed him, he parted from them and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. It's just gone. Leave it up. John 3, 13. Again, no one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man, which is in heaven. What does that make Jesus? It makes him God who is now in heaven. Just taken up. Now, notice this one. John 6, 33. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven. And the bread of God is He which comes down from heaven. There it's bread, and there it's a person. Big difference. Jesus is systematically removed in the modern translations. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he who believes has eternal life. Who believes what? That frogs are gods? And there are religions that believe that, by the way, today, alive and living in a well in Japan, for example. Who believes what? Mother Teresa says, whatever you believe God is, that you must accept. That's good enough. No, no, no. The King James says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has eternal life. Gone. Two little words. They make a big, big difference. John 16, 16. RSV. A little while and you will see me no more. Again a little while and you will see me. I laugh about this text. You know what this text means? Jesus was playing hide-and-seek. He was peeping behind a tree. He was standing there behind a tree and he says, Now you see me, now you don't. Now you see me, now you don't. It's pathetic. God wouldn't put a stupid text like that in the Bible. The NIV, well, it's just as stupid. In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. Well, I'm going to stand behind a tree. That's what I'm going to do. The King James says, A little while and you shall see me. And again a little while, and you shall, s you shall not see me, or a little while, you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. That makes sense. Kings 18.21, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, Not a word. They would have preferred to worship both. Then we would have had peace and quiet. Today, they want to do the same thing. They want to worship both. Now, I would like to invite three people, three volunteers. One with an NIV, one with a Revised Standard Version, if you have one with you, and one with a King James, just to come up to the front, and we'll do a little experiment. Just a quick one, just for fun. Let's do it. This is great. Now, I don't know how quickly we're going to find these texts, but let's just look up a few. Will you look up Matthew chapter 17, verse 21? Will you read it to me out of the King James? Howbeit this kind of goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. This one goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. What does the NIV say? 
He replied, because you have... That's 20. No, I want only verse 21, please. Okay. Why doesn't it say 21 here? It's oh, oh, it doesn't say 21. What does what the RSV say? It doesn't say either. Oh, the RSV doesn't say it either. Let's go to Matthew 18, verse 11. 18, verse 11. What does the King James say? For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Wow, that's a potent verse. How many sermons have been preached on that word? What does the NIV say? It, it says verse 10 and verse 12. There is no verse 11. There, there is no verse... Oh, okay. What does the RSV say? Same. You can't find it in there? No. Oh, that's rather sad. What about Matthew 23, verse 14? Could you read that for me, please? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Wow. The clergy that is so exalted now gets one knock. What does yours say? No, 14. There's 13 and 15. Oh, the, the, surely, you know, they must be so exalted Jesus made a mistake with that verse. <laughs> Let's just take it out. What does yours say? Nothing. Oh, it doesn't have it either. What about Mark 7, 16? Mark? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 14 and 15, but no verse 16. No verse 16. No, not either. It's important to listen to the Word of God. Now let's take Mark 9.44. Mark 9.44. 9.44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. There's a verse 43 and a verse 45, but no verse 44. No verse 44. No, I hear you. Mm no verse 44. That's an interesting text. We can deal with it in a later lecture. What's about verse 46? Verse what? 9.46. For where there worm die, the die same not, one. and the fire is not quenched. Yeah. It's left out both times, right? There's a verse 45 and a verse 47, but no verse 46. What about Mark 11.26? But if ye do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. Well, there's a verse 25 and a verse 27, but no verse 26. You know, we could go on like this for a long, long time. None of those vo verses will be there. Let's go to some interesting verses that are there. Let's go to Acts 9, verse 5 to 6. Said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Acts 9, 5, and 6. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you have persecuted, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Okay, and in the RSV? Who are you, Lord? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. So what has been left out? The whole part where there is opposition and battling against two options. So in an ecumenical Bible, you don't want division, you want unity, so all these division texts where you make a decision, they're gone in the new ones. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, Where's the last bit? Not there. Oh, so if you have Jesus, you are saved. No change necessary in your life. What about the RSV? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No change need needed. 
who walk not after the flesh. Does that apply a change and a conversion? Yes or no? Absolutely. Gone. Because we want to have one big unity. These are all texts that we didn't even deal with in this lecture. And we could carry on and on and on and on and on with them. What about 1 Timothy 3.16? Let's just look at that one. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. The pillar and foundation of the truth. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. And you have the same. He was, right? He was. Yes. It says, great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of our religion. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. And if you take that home with you tonight, then that is the crux of the matter. The King James Version says, God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is the only one who can save you. Jesus Christ is the only one whereby you can be saved. Because he's the only one who made you, and therefore he's the only one who can redeem you. He's the only one who can open the seals of the scroll. No one else, no created being, no angel, only Jesus Christ. And if you want to prove any of the doctrines of the Bible, you better have a King James or any other Bible that existed before these early 1900s. You can take the Russian Bible. You can take the Serbian Bible. You can take the old Croatian Bible. You can take the Luther 1912 Bible. Just don't take the 1984. You will find a tremendous change. You can take any old Bible in the world, except the Douay, of course, and the Vulgate, and you will find all the doctrines necessary for understanding salvation in Christ Jesus. But any new translation, treat with suspicion. In, Afri in the Afrikaans, in my own country, the old Afrikaans Bible, tremendous, exactly the same as the King James, the new, like the NIV. In Germany, if you have an Elberfelder Bible, it's exactly like the NIV. You can find none of the doctrines in it anymore. You will have to get a Luther 1912 or a Schlachter Bible in order to find the truth. And we could go right around the world. The Armenian Bible, fantastic. Fantastic. They are now writing a new Bible version in Croatia for the Serbian language. Forget it. It is a corruption. It's based on Westcott and Hort's translations. So, I hope tonight you have found that what you read really makes a difference. And then verify your studies with one that you can trust. And the Textus Recepticus has come down through the stream of time. It has been the one that led the, to, to the Reformation. It has been the one that people have stood and died for. And it is the one that will make a difference at the end. You believe me.